<coughs> Good afternoon, to all. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, we will continue with this uh, system, control system design by frequency response technique. As you can see, this is the topic 11. Uh, topic 11. Okay, basically, why are we studying frequency response? We can see here. First is that mainly for studying the stability of the closed loop system and also uh, we can use it for tuning and this where we start to use the body diagram as a convenient method uh, not necessary we can use other method but it's not a convenient method for us to design our uh, stability and tuning of the controllers okay the control system is unstable based on the body stability criteria the control system is unstable if the open loop frequency response exhibits and amplitude ratio exceeding unity at the frequency for which the phase lag is 180 degrees. This is called a crossover frequency. Whenever the phase lag is 180 degrees, this is called a crossover frequency. And at the point of the 180 degrees, we have to check the amplitude ratio. Somebody was asking yesterday about uh, system oscillating will tend to become uh, unstable. Yes, if it's uh, if at uh, at a crossover frequency of 180 degrees, which means the phase lag is already 180 degrees, only one cycle, and if the amplitude ratio exceeds one, then it means it's going to be unstable. It means the uh, the uh, amplitude is going to increase and increase and increase further until it becomes unstable. But if the AR is less than one, then it's okay. It will start to uh, the, uh, the oscillation will start to be damped. And we will not get overlapping of the of the oscillations. But if at 180 degrees, which is the overlapping part, and at the same time the R start to increase, what will happen? It will start to be instable. So this body stability is used. Uh, it's going to be used to to design our controller and also to look at the stability of the system. So two important points uh, we want to see in the body plot. One is the crossover frequency at uh, the phase lag of minus 180 degrees and one is where the amplitude ratio is e equivalent to one okay. okay this is the body plot simple body plot of amplitude ratio versus the frequency and the phase angle versus the frequency so if we have uh, the at uh, crossover frequency of minus 180 degrees we have to check the amplitude ratio it's less than one then which means we have stability and uh, as long as it's far from one this is called the gate margin how far it is from one is called the gate margin okay and on the other side if we start to look at the amplitude ratio of one if it's at amplitude ratio of one and we go down and check the phase margin the, we check the uh, phase angle and if it's less than 180 degrees means it's stable and the degree of stability or the uh, margin that we get is called the phase margin so either way either you check at 180 degrees to see whether the amplitude ratio is less than one or not or we look at the amplitude ratio and at one and check whether we have a phase angle uh, margin or not so, so this is why we have two methods of designing. One is called the gain margin design, and one is called the phase margin design. Either to uh, de deciding the the uh, crossover frequency and getting the gain margin, or deciding the the uh, phase margin and seeing how much how much we can get in terms of in terms of, uh, at, at value of one, how much phase margin we can get. So both ways we can use, and this is how this is the this is the advantage of having this body stability criteria or body diagram that we can see it quite clearly. Of course, we can also use the calculation oscillator to design a system. Okay, so basically, the gain margin is uh, take M, M or magnitude ratio, amplitude ratio depends. If we are talking about uh, the amplitude ratio all divided by the, by the constant, we call it M. If not, it's called amplitude ratio. So either one we can use. So what we say is take the M at the crossover, the, this is the crossover frequency and how far it is from M 
from 1 is called gain margin. If let m less than 1, closed loop stable. If this is stable, closed loop system stable. If m greater than 1, closed loop system is unstable. You can see here. So if if it's less than 1, it is stable and the stability is called given the gain margin. And if more than 1, it is of course unstable. Next is the phase margin. Phase margin, if you look, take the phase angle, phi, and where AR equals to 1, at A, what is the phase angle? And then we can see what, what is the phase margin, how much difference we have from the from the instable point. So then this extra phase is used is available for the system for the system to become stable. Okay, and this is this is what we call as the phase margin. You can see here again if we get one and how much is the phase angle, how much uh, far away from the crossover frequency we have what we call the phase margin. Okay, so a few notes here. The higher the phase and gain margin, the higher the safety factor, of course. It's better, of course, but not too high. If the parameters of that is well known, the gain margin, normally we can use between 1.4 to 1.7. Uh, if not, sometimes we can use higher than one. We don't need to, too high gain margin because it may be unnecessary. So we can use 1.5, 1.7, or a little bit more, 1.7 to 2 and 2, 2 and above, something like that we can use. And the normal phase margin, normally about 30 to 45. Uh, okay. A negative phase margin means the system not stable. That means it's already above 180 degrees. So the point of stability is at 180 degrees. What is amplitude ratio? Or at amplitude ratio one, what is the phase margin? What is the phase angle? These are the points of stability that we can use for that. Okay. For that, we can, based on that, we can use our Ziegler Nikolsky method to design our system. Yeah. Uh, based on frequency response. What we have studied so far is the zikadikal uh, method based on uh, the the uh, non-frequency response method. Now we can well, we are based on the frequency response method. So what we can do is we can draw the body plot for the whole uh, system okay, without the controller and then from the overall body plot we will obtain the crossover frequency and from the crossover frequency, we can obtain the uh, overall gain and the ultimate period. And from this, we can plot, uh, from these values, we use the Zikernikus tuning constant to get the Kc and the tau i and the, the tau i and the tau d. So these are uh, the, the method of doing it. So we, you, you take the values at the, uh, the KU, the, the KU, what, what is the one that is giving the the uh, con the uh, continuous oscillation, the KU, and also get the WC naught as the phase angle. Uh, put it into the Ziegler Nichols. Put into the Ziegler Nichols uh, equation, and you're going to get the. Uh, this is the uh, Ziegler Nichols tuning constant. Uh, Control setting that we've seen before. So once we get the KU and the PU, then we can put this and to design our controllers. Okay. So basically, this is frequency response straight from the body diagram or from the equation to get our ultimate frequency, ultimate gain, and the ultimate frequency PU. Okay, example here. Uh, we want to design the KC for this control system. Okay, assuming that we have done the tau d, and this is the system we plot, the body plot before this in the last class. And we got this plot in the last class. We got the overall plot. Okay, and we got the overall curve uh, with with derivative action or without derivative, depending on which one we are going to use it. Okay, if we design, with, with we consider we already have the derivative action, we can use the overall curve with derivative action. If not, we, we can use the one without derivative action. So using this body plot, what we want to know now is to get the KU and the, uh, the WC naught, the crossover frequency. Okay. So from the body plot, first of all, we get the cross, crossover frequency, which is 8.62, uh, where, where it goes at minus 180 degrees. And from that, we can get the the gain at 0 0.0445.
So this is the the sort of uh, 0 0.0445 is the margin that we have. If you say we want a, a value of the value of Kc to make the gain one, then this is the value of Kc that we're going to get 22.5. But since we want a gain margin of 1.7, we are, we are trying to get a higher Kc value to get some margin. Okay, we still got the margin. But this is uh, at uh, the value of Kc to 2.5. We only got a uh, gain margin of 1. But to achieve a gain margin of 1.7, we can use 22.5 divided by 1.7. And this is going to be a Kc based on gain margin of 1.7. Okay, so this is uh, based on gain margin design. And yeah, so we, if you, you got the WC naught at 180 degrees. Okay, and then we go up. At 180 degrees, what is the value just now? And we get the value 0 0.0045. So we got that margin of 1. If we put 1.7, we divide by 1.7. That is the that, uh, gain. Okay, and then for the phase margin method, what's that one? Okay, this one is another way if you want, you can design it uh, using uh, also using the equations now. Okay, this is your system. Okay, now you want to find out the KU, so you can, uh, and the KU and the, the WC naught. So well, first of all, we get the the cross crossover frequency at the at phase slack of minus 180 degrees. What is the crossover frequency? So we, we calculate using the equation here. For this is for the uh, date time. Okay, this one is uh, to convert to a radian per minute. Okay. For this one, it's just uh, uh, the amplitude ratio, okay, given by this one, minus 10 minus 1 omega, and this one is given by this one, converted to radian per minute. So we, we can solve this to get the crossover frequency at 2 radian per minute. So once we get the crossover frequency, so we can calculate amplitude ratio, uh, and then uh, we can, uh, the overall amplitude ratio is the, uh, the Kc, and this first uh, first order system, okay, and the gain for phase slack is just one. So this is going to be overall uh, AR, okay, and then to uh, use the Ziegler nickel setting, then we can we get uh, Kc equals 0.45 Kcu, which is 0.45 times 2.24. This is uh, AR equals to 1, the Kc equals 2.24. If you use the Ziegler niggers and Pop 5, 2.24, this is going to be your, your Kc value for using Zn and the tau r is given by this method. You can get 2 pi or Wc0 is given by 2. So we will get this as the tau i. So this is the Kc and the tau i for the uh, tuning if you use just an equation to solve it. Instead of, you can use my body plot just now, design it on gain margin or phase margin or or use straight away the Zygenicus or you can use the equation to solve the method. Okay, and uh, this is a typical example. If you use a PI, PID, this is sort of response you're going to get. But in, in this example, we have this another example here in this system. Uh, how, how are you going to get your PI, 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 PID? So see, this is the example in the book, page 338. So if using the, your... Uh, Body diagram that you plot for that, you're going to get your crossover frequency, and from that, you're going to get your amplitude ratio, uh, your KC, your amplitude ratio ultimate gain, and your ultimate uh, period. And then from that, you use your Ziegler tuning vector, and you will get all this tuning, right? either using your P, PI, or PID. Right? And uh, this is based on Ziegler method. Uh, using the plot, either you use the plot or you can use the equation to solve it's using the clinical method. And if you look at that, you're going to get these are the gain margin you're going to get. Uh, for P, you get a two gain margin of two for PI 1.9, and you use the PID setting, you get 2.6 gain margin, and this is the phase margin. All of them are acceptable gain margin and phase margin based on the Ziegler Nicholas uh, tuning method. And uh, you can you can understand why we get a gain margin of two because the the tuning constant for for the is just half of the KU KU is when the gain margin is one 
But if you take it half, then you're going to get a double gain margin. So you get two gain margin. Okay. And these are the normal uh, criteria that we're going to use. If you use PI, PID, this is going to be the normal criteria that we're going to get from the response to overshoot, decay, rise time, response, period of set. These are the dynamic criteria. This is the steady state criteria, dynamic criteria at certain points. You can all use the IES, IEC, and to, to check the uh, response of the system. Uh, these are the example. If you start I2, tau point five. this is a sort of response you're going to get. So the the if you increase the kc you're going to get more oscillation if you increase the tau r you're going to get you're going to get less uh, overshoot uh, faster to the set point if you're going to increase your tau d you will see that you're going to uh, you're going to decrease your tau d you're going to get more, more oscillation so these are the, the varying effects of the uh, control parameters on the response of the system using the Ziegler and Nichols method that we have studied before. Okay, so this is another method of tuning. We have seen this tuning method, Ziegler and Nichols, but this is we're using the frequency response approach uh, to get the Ziegler and Nichols, but at the end of the day, the, the tuning is still the same thing, whether through the method of uh, uh, getting the oscillation results, getting the values, or through the frequency response, then you're going to get the Ziegler and Nichols tuning method more or less roughly the same way.